So a while back, I did a video discussing computer storage options like SSDs and hard disk drives. And after several requests, I decided to come back for a part two and review the latest tech and VME drives. So let's dive in. So as a recap from my previous video, hard disk drives get their name from the hard metal platters inside which store data magnetically. These platters spin while a tiny arm called the read-write head moves across them, kind of like a record player. Because of the moving parts, hard disk drives can be noisy and are more likely to have mechanical issues. They come in two sizes, 3.5 inch for desktops and 2.5 inch for laptops. Inside the computer, they connect through an L-shaped SATA port, but you'll also see 2.5 inch drives placed in plastic cases like this one so that you can connect them via USB. These days, most computers use solid state drives or SSDs instead of traditional hard drives. SSDs work more like a, a giant USB flash drive. No moving parts, just memory chips that can access data almost instantaneously. They're faster, quieter, and use less less power than hard disk drives. To put it into perspective in terms of speed, copying a DVD movie, which is equivalent to 1300 high quality smartphone pics, might take around 35 seconds on a hard disk drive, which sounds pretty fast. On an SSD, it would take about 10 seconds. The trade-off, of course, is cost. SSDs usually run anywhere from two to three times more per gigabyte than hard disk drives. Another way to think of it is hard disk drives are like the reliable minivans of data storage. They're slower, but more affordable and great for big jobs like backups, media libraries, or security cam footage. SSDs, on the other hand, are the core vets. They're sleek, they're faster, but they're also a bit pricier. They're perfect for gaming, booting your operating system, multitasking, or video editing. Like hard disk drives, SATA SSDs use the same L-shaped SATA connector inside the computer. Now, let's move on to the very small NVMe drives. And if SATA SSDs are the Corvettes of storage, NVMe drives are the Formula One race cars, blazing fast, but also much more expensive than SSDs. And to put speed into perspective again, transferring that same DVD movie would take an NVMe drive less than two seconds compared to 10 seconds on a SATA SSD. That speed pays off in heavy workloads like video editing, CAD design, compiling large code projects, or some serious multitasking, but you're going to pay more than 30 to 50% per gigabyte than an SSD. Lastly, unlike SSDs or hard disk drives, NVMe drives don't use cables. They plug directly into the motherboard's M2 socket which taps into the computer's what's called PCIe lanes, which are basically the auto bond of computer data highways. They're extremely fast. So now let's take a peek at using this NVMe drive in Windows with the help of this external enclosure that is connected via USB. We will secure the NVMe into the enclosure and then we'll plug the enclosure into the USB port of the computer and then we'll walk through how to set it up. Okay, so here we are in our Windows computer and we have one hard drive, which is our main drive. And we will go ahead and plug in our NVMe drive with the enclosure. So after plugging it in, Windows automatically detected it and it assigned it a letter H, which is not uncommon for external drives. Sometimes there'll be a letter D or letter E, just depending on how your system is configured. And if we double click on it, we can see that we have all these different files and folders and other things that are on here. I think I had this as a, a boot drive on another computer. And I will go on the left hand side where I'm under this PC right here. And I will go up to this folder here where I have a lot of my published video thumbnails. And I'm going to right click on this and go to copy. And then I'll go back to the end via me drive which is h and i will right click and paste and here is the picture here and then another trick you can do so i'm gonna put this in a different window just so we can see a little bit better as to what we're doing okay so here is on the left hand side is my pictures that I have for my thumbnails on the right hand side is my NVMe drive. So if I hold down my shift key 
while dragging it over, you can see that it says move to the H drive. So let it go and it moves it over. And that was pretty quick. Now, sometimes you want to format a drive and formatting a drive is like priming a wall before painting. It wipes everything clean and prepares the drive so you can store files and pictures and whatever documents you might have. Now, normally if you go out and buy a storage drive, like a USB drive and plug it into your computer's USB port, Windows will prompt you to format the drive so it can detect it and so it can use it properly. If you want to do it manually, like in our case, all you do is you right click on it and you go down to format. Make sure that you don't do this if you're not sure what's on your drive. Everything here is going to be fine. The only thing I want to change is this where it says file system. I'm going to click on this little drop down and go to NTFS, which is for Windows. If you wanted to use this also on a Mac, you could use what's called XFAT, EXFAT. This will work on both Mac and Windows. The volume label or the name of the drive is right now it says bootfs that's just something that was assigned to it if you wanted to use this drive for like your pictures specifically or your movies you can highlight this and type in movies and that's fine you can see that it's selected as quick format which is fine i'm going to select start and then it warns me this is going to delete everything and it's usually pretty quick if we click on the drive over on the right hand side you can see that it now says movies or movie singular <laughs> and if i want i can right click on it and go down to properties and it tells us the free space is about 500 megabytes, which is fine. And if I wanted to, I could rename it again. If I name it to for movies, click on apply. So there's a lot of other options within this menu if you wanted to share it on the network and control how much information is stored on here, and which we're not gonna get into in this video. But I did wanna show the basics of setting it up within Windows so you can use it to store your information and formatting it. So that wasn't, uh, wasn't too bad. So that is gonna wrap things up for this video today, folks. If you found this useful and want more content content like this, please make sure you click the subscribe button and drop any feedback or questions in my comment section, por favor. Also, if you haven't already, please stop over at my Patreon where I have a lot of in-depth tutorials from my videos as well as exclusive behind the scene footage not available on YouTube. Thank you again, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate all of your support and we'll be talking to you again very soon.